<laughs> Welcome back after the lunch break. Uh, I hope that everybody found something nice to eat. We will continue now, and I would like to welcome Stefan Brun of Parsonate and uh, Horst Huber, our CEO. We have put up a kitchen table, because where do you have lunch, classically? Well, in a small kitchen. And these two gentlemen thought, well, let's have the coffee uh, on stage in a kitchen talk. And these two gentlemen will now speak about the art of taking future-proof decisions. If you should have any questions, please, please give us a show of hand so that I can actually sprint to you with a mic as a mic runner. So enjoy. Well, thanks very much to start with. And uh, first of all, there are some chairs uh, available. If you ask the proper questions, there's a seat reserved for you. Okay, we do know some people. So we do know the names of some people. We can point at you. <laughs> So, ignorance does not protect you from participation. And this is the idea. Was this a question to start with? No. Um, um, a few weeks ago, I called you, Horst, um, after um, Tobias and Carson approached me, what can we do? And then I called you, wouldn't it be a nice idea? Um, uh, where do the best uh, talks take place? During parties, at night? in the kitchen. And this is why we brought in this original kitchen table. Well, it didn't work out with the evening and the party. And uh, then we would have had wine bottles on the table. Now we're trying it with uh, some latte macchiato. Yeah, we have to make sacrifices. No wine, but cafe latte macchiato. But before we have our um, latte macchiato, no, I called you with the idea of not having the usual lecture, but having a talk instead. And through the phone, I immediately felt after a second, a fraction of a second, you, you were enthused. Can you remember why um, you like this topic uh, so much? Decisions, future-proof decisions and complexity? Yeah. Uh, um, he, he tempted me with a bottle of right wine. Do you want to come up on the stage and drink red wine? I said, yes. Then we were talking about complex decisions and decisions for the futures. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I think the situation, um, joking aside, I think it's a very exciting subject because uh, complex is frequently uh, associated with complicated. Um, I don't know. I don't know uh, which of you know the difference. A complex system is something where if you change one thing, then somebody else changes. But the influencing factors also change in turn. So the conduct of a complex system can't be predicted. That's it. Whereas a complicated system can be pr predicted. It is predictable. It's not easy. But uh, if I do the same thing with the same frame of conditions, it works. I found a wonderful example in literature by Dost, and he uh, described it as follows. Just imagine there is a ball lying on the floor, and you kick it, and it flies. This would be an example of a trivial system. Um, you can actually calculate uh, the path. Uh, but when you do the same thing, and I never do it, but if you do it with a dog, you, you kick the dog, then this is a non-trivial element. The, the dog can run away, um, the dog will probably fly, but the dog could also bite you or do different things. Lie flat on the ground, for instance. Um, in other words... Um, this is a good pointer to complex situations. It's unforeseeable, the reaction. And this brings us to one element. I can only perceive it by trying out and observing. With the risk of making a mistake. 
you briefly asked whether uh, anybody knows what's, what is complex. Yeah, lots of people nodded their heads. Any additions to this? Um, an important pointer. We want to ease your decision. Nina has, has a telephone. And uh, with this telephone, you can order proper coffee here. We're trying to entice you. There's a few spaces up here. Laukimate, oh, it is wonderful here. It tastes really good. Oh, I, I, I can see some, some hesitant uh, faces here. Yeah, we'll, we'll add another cup, a cu no, couple more cups if you want. Well, real Lotte Macchiato, and yes, yes, I've seen you nodding. What's the difference uh, in terms of taking decisions? Because that's what's f what's about in the difference in social systems between complicated and complex. We come to human concepts, um, and I would be interested to know what you have to say about this. Each social system involving person is for me a complex system. It's not complicated, it's complex, always, yes. But we, we work in teams in print projects and uh, for instance, what is the challenge uh, for us as entrepreneurs or as scrum master or, or beneficial owner? Because I have to take decisions on a daily basis and how do I handle these? Well, uh, um, uh, let me postpone the answer, if this is okay with you. Let us briefly go back to the question, what is a decision? And what is so special about taking decisions? Luhmann, oh, you've all read Luhmann and understood it, um, I guess. If not, um, if we add another two hours, we can also uh, discuss the organization, his organizational theory. No, honest, um, honestly, uh, when taking decisions, um, let me offer you a little story. A mother gives two shirts to her son, beautiful shirts, attractive shirts, and the mom uh, actually visits two day, a few days later, and the son simply for affection and uh, out of the gratitude for this uh, giveaway, he wears one of the shirts and mom sees this, enjoys it, and she says, oh, uh, y you didn't like the other one, did you? This is this is the this is the, the 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 symbol the sign of it. This is the characteristic feature. You could say you can only go wrong. Hmm? This is the decision we're all we're always uh, find uh, as being relevant for leaders and for teams. In, uh, uh, you actually refer to this as paradox, uh, uh, this resolving. This is not a contradiction in itself. It is something that contradicts itself. Um, but this is the limit, and we won't go beyond this. Horst, do you have an idea um, or an example? Uh, that is uh, revolving around decisions, taking decisions? Oh, um, uh, well, w the other one is enough as, as an undershirt. Now just open uh, your shirt so that we can see it. Very pragmatic. Yeah. Great. Great solution. Great solution. Print consultant. Yeah. This was one of the colleagues writing software. Yeah, was, uh, implementing the product, sorry. Yeah, wrong decision <laughs> for this role. Yeah, let us probably return to how you can really take decisions because we don't want to only d dwell on theories. Yeah, we could um, follow up on your input, Scrum, as a Agile. What does... What uh, does an agile process involve, based on your e on your experience in daily project work? Uh, Mike, Mina's got the microphone for you. Um, uh, 
I think um, your question does not refer to all of the agile paradigms, guiding rails. We're all aware of these. Um, I think um, uh, if it was one word, I would say attitude. Great. So attitude, I would say, if I want to make a creative uh, a, a supplement, attitude combined with the acceptance of certain framework conditions. Uh, why do we have this scrum and this agile stuff? Why has it been developed? There is a reason. You just don't, don't do it just for the fun of it. OK, and it was done because people said these competitions, they, uh, these web projects, they come from the web, and we don't really know what our customers need on our website, and in brackets, we don't we don't know uh, at all. And I, the technology development is very dramatic. The development is much quicker um, than in the past. The development cycles have become shorter. So now um, we have to act uh, much quicker uh, within framework conditions. That we of which we have very little knowledge, and which we cannot really oversee. And the the solution is 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 trivial. Then we just say, okay, we have to react more quickly. And qu reacting more quickly means if you don't have unlimited resources and you don't want to create unlimited resources, then that means we have to make each piece smaller. So we do some, we have a look, gain some experience, then take a step forwards, perhaps one to the side and two steps backwards, depending on the situation. And then that's an, ad, that's an, an agile uh, course of action because at the ultimately we cannot say what uh, the, what requirements, what demands will be placed on us in two years because we have a complex system. So we move forward step by step, and what you say uh, is, I think, absolutely correct. That you you talk of the attitude, you accept that you cannot uh, oversee everything, and you accept that that that. You may be surprised by one or the other consequence. You, that's something we have to accept. So attitude means, however, that, that we don't have anarchy. Um, many customers uh, confuse or um, agile acting with clueless working. So we've got three or four of these, and we want to do a few more, but we don't need to describe it uh, quickly. We need to be agile, make a quick start. and. Then think about specifying it, and that's not what's required. The small uh, unit is fully planned, well described, and, and ha has a plan. And as you said, uh, I know it, we probably all know this, but there are, there are also release uh, aims. So we all say, yes, prize uh, business release depending on how you do it. And then we say, yes, there are print objectives and business release objectives. So we know, basic on um, prints, what we want to achieve. And the smallest unit we have to modify it is the smallest one, the print. So there's a, a plan and an attitude in terms of what we want to achieve. That, but. OK, the, the attitude has to be changed quickly. But that does not mean not having a plan and not reflecting on how the complex system reacts. And to probably also uh, uh, actually respond to one aspect that you mentioned your question, and this is the, the question. In the Agile me method of uh, Scrum, this is really the key characteristic that uh, you start with the decision for certain sprints, sprint targets, but for a very short period of time. That's the decisive thing. You see, uh, or 
what can be done in this amount of time, um, because you cannot be sure about the effect, the outcome. And this is also along the lines of Luhmann, because the result is learning. You first of all see um, what's the outcome, what's the insight, and then you decide again based on this insight. And this redecision, and there are certain circles in Scrum, but um, let me bring it back to this basic formula. You decide in favor of something in view of the complexity that you can never come to grips with 100%. So I try out something that is simple, the dog example. Maybe I, d I don't kick it, but I approach the dog. And how will the dog react? So the first approach with the dog. This is already a decision to approach the dog. And then I abstain from doing other things, many other things. And from based on the observation of how the dog behaves, uh, for my learning, I actually take the next step. And this is the basic pattern. But unfortunately, not that trivial, because acting in an agile manner with Scrum or other processes because software development is, 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 is good. You can describe it and you can define hard criteria, criteria satisfaction, and then you carry out the test. Uh, yes or no? This sounds too easy. What happens in everyday life when somebody uh, approaches you and says, I have an idea, but I need some time and money. Does this happen? Does this exist? And uh, this is directed to you, this question. You're sitting on the purse, so to speak. Um, uh, but well, well, well it's, it's, the back, it's in the hip pocket, because in the front pocket, you've got the stock cube. We know that. We've learned it. So you're sitting on the purse, and somebody wants something from you. And I'm just looking at the developers at the back rows here in the room. How, what is your decision? Yeah, my decision is, is dependent on the situation. There, of course, there are various levels. One is the classical question, what about the business value? Yeah. How, what will my return be over what period? What's the risk of it either being a success or a failure? Then you have risk management, and you say, okay, we'll do this, and you move forward step by step. I think that's the uh, normal reaction. But at the same time, I have to say, if I look at the print suite, it's difficult to, uh, to name a percentage, but a, a significant number of the functions of the products, uh, well, I would say, no, w we can't do that. Hope is not my uh, my uh, alarm ringing. Yeah, a question. It's a question coming in. Yeah, I would have said, no, we don't need that. But then I would say, I don't say, uh, I think it's totally rubbish, but um, I'll say, do it and, and come back to me when you've got it done. But even if I'm convinced that the a project is doomed to fail i i the have the success rate of of a monkey 50% 50% of the time i'm right i it was a stupid idea and 50% of the time i'm mistaken this is quite exciting what you just said you agree um, probably you negotiate the sum but you agree, although you think that it is doomed to fail. Have I rightly understood you? This is an exciting point you just made. Why do you believe that you, that you will be doing this? You believe in an idea, you invest, although you're not believing in it. Um, because uh, n not knowledge is that made me take the risk. 50% success rate, of course. If... if uh, um, and an employee comes and says, boss, I've got an idea. If everybody had a Ferrari, then uh, we would do this and this. And I might uh, ask a few questions because I have to get some, some 
realistic sense of, of perspective, but... Uh, well, uh, I think we could strike a compromise when it comes to the Ferraris <laughs> to stick to the negotiation level. Well, I focused on this uh, because um, this, this approach um, is relevant to decisions and um, which is prone to make decisions better and that is uh, that you observe yourself um, uh, regarding how you take decisions um, I find it so special that you said let's try it nevertheless although I don't believe in it I think this is really an important point because this is uh, really what good decisions are about that as an expert um, you cannot actually know whether things will be successful in the future. Uh, it's complex anyway, but uh, it's not foreseeable either. All major um, incorrect decisions in the history of mankind uh, have always been based on the fact that people uh, uh, transfer the old situation to the new situation and say, well, uh, when we did that in the past, it worked, or had we done it this way in the past, it would have worked, and they transfer that, and usually that it goes wrong because the framework conditions have changed and the contexts are very difficult to predict. And in talking of complexity, given the political situation in the Ukraine, perhaps a, a, a not a good word, but one of the mantras in the military world is that for whom uh, d don't prepare for the last war, but prepare for the next war. So the next war will be different to the last one. So just don't base your thoughts on the last war. Think about how things will be in future. That's a fundamental component of every military doctrine. Uh, major mistakes are made if you just transfer the past to the future. The last sentence, um, let me look at theory again, let me add. But with this, you're also starting to think about objectives or targets, and I think this uh, also forms an integral part of uh, uh, decisions, a decisive part of decisions, having the clarity about what you want to achieve. Clarity and attitude, attitude towards the, th the things, and that clearly involves uh, clarity. And I think believing in decisions, I think uh, that's, that's something for a Sunday morning. Did I mention believing? Yeah, I, I, saying, I said I don't believe in this. Uh, I could have said, um, I can't um, assess, it, assess this, uh, I can't know uh, anyway, but I don't have an opinion. I would like to dissect this uh, believing, uh, and I, I share your view, but when somebody approaches you and says, I have an idea, believing in that idea and also in, in, in the, the person, uh, although you, you think or you believe that uh, it has never worked out, but believing it is really important. Yes, I'm, I'm convinced, yeah, as you, as you say. There's another level of complexity that uh, comes in addition. The decision and the results, the timing also has to be right. Timing is a very decisive uh, factor. And if you look at this, if you look at the last part of the digital revolution, the smartphone, when uh, first of all, the fir Steve Jobs threw the first version into the rubbish bin. It wasn't good enough. He said, we can't carry on. He said, go back and Im Im improve things. I think that was a few years ago. And I think that was a, a relevant amount of money even back then. Because he said, I'm convinced that we need a better quality for our product. So timing. Even if everything is perfect and you've done everything correctly, timing must be right as well. Um, now, you don't need to come up here, but um, 
the subject with the with the facets. This is a, 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 a small example, not that small actually. Uh, the idea of Vago Arto Vozniak um, was in. I, I found it great. I was completely, absolutely convinced. And yeah, the discussion company cu culture in our company is that uh, I, I'm frequently asked about why we do certain things because there's, there's a lot of a lot of capacity. It's concentrated on one product that's not scalable, so it's quite right for my colleagues to ask me, are you sh sure you're, you're acting correctly? Um, we have things missing everywhere, and y are you not j sure it's just not your favorite plaything? Are you certain? I said, yes, I'm convinced. I can't say when, but I'm convinced that this will actually come. I don't know whether two, three, or five years. I don't know, but I said I'm, I'm not going to in, in encumber the organization with this. That's why I'm going to look after it, and uh, um, and I'm, I've carried out some transactions. The topic is slowly catching on, and I think in the next few years it will be a fixed part of our strategy and our print suite. With with one customer, uh, loyal customer, Vago, uh, it took five years to get from the first customer to the second one. This is conviction. <laughs> this is what I call conviction. No, uh, but I don't want to encumber the organization. I've uh, involved a couple of people as CEO. That's that's. It's a bit easier to. Uh, to get the resources, but um, that is uh, a decision, and I think I also think uh, similar to the Scrum planning, nothing to do with software, but it's a general aspect. I think you need to have an idea, you need an own, your own model, your own conviction of how things can work. You, it may be wrong. It may things may change. It may even be wrong. This is what the cycle is for that I've just described. Regardless of how you decide and regardless of the method you apply, it makes no difference. Decisions are good when you back them up with an attitude, as we heard. And uh, if this other uh, element comes into play, that is when you recheck and reassess after a short amount of time and then redecide, this actually generates a cycle. And this is uh, what, what, what we are so hesitant about. In my role as a consultant, you have to submit offers, agile offers, but at a fixed price. Uh, well, you're smiling. But um, at times it is, it is very difficult. Is anybody here from controlling or from purchasing departments and comment on this? No. Um, uh, and I guess everybody knows this issue. Uh, th there's uh, no, uh, th there's a lot of insecurity involved, and um, and uh, you're also venturing into insecure decisions. And you really have to talk to each other. You have to communicate. Uh, you have to build confidence. And this brings us to the same point again. Just the idea. M small units, try out, um, you can call it whatever you want to, uh, proof of concept or scale models, sketching or whatever. Uh, d working on it jointly, then reassessing it, are we on the right track? This has, this has to do with uh, conviction and w with a model and everything you're trying to pursue. Um, uh, in, uh, when, is when I joined the pool, I was talking about the building the pyramids, and in the in the break, I talked to Mr. Custer, and we said, "Yeah, that with the f with f the pharaoh, that was a bit unrealistic. The pharaoh had an idea. Let's build a pyramid, and we'll mobilize the total economy, and it will be ready in 20, 30 years." That was 100% related to the PIM um, example because Vago is a stakeholder and they said, well, we're not going to erect pyramids if I don't know how much it costs and how long it takes, what my benefit will be. 
And if I'm not talking about some uh, cosmonaut uh, sphere. Yeah, OK. I'm, I'm painting a black and white picture, but uh, the analogy to the PIMs is uh, what we're looking for. And as Mr. Kuster said, we have chat GPT, K uh, AI. We put, we put things into a machine, but ultimately we need good data. And we need a system. We know that uh, in, a, in a cinema, we have to, we have to uh, in my keynote speech, I said we have to live with this platform economy. We won't um, destroy this. We have to live with the platform economy, setting up own platforms, unless someone has an awful lot of cash. Um, but so we must, we must come to terms with the platform e economy uh, and accept it. Uh, this I'm not talking about the next two or three years, but long term. In the long term, if people see things differently, then um, other than platform, uh, unless platform capitalism changes completely, uh, then. Well, can we can establish this as a determining factor? What do economic theories do? They establish facts. They say we have a complex system. We can't influence everything. So let's make some assumption. Assumption assume that this and this is fixed and introduce one or two variables. So the determining factor is that we have to to come to terms with the platform economy. That's a determining factor. And we know that somehow we have to have more and better contact. Uh, we could all uh, sing the content song. I don't think there's any need to discuss this. We might perhaps uh, have to convince <laughs> the pharaoh, but uh, OK, we know that. So we have to provide the platform economy with good data, irrespective of the business model. This is something we have to do, and we have to Lim that our li the resources are limited both in terms of personnel and in terms of cash. Uh, I see this in all companies, whether partners or companies. They are all looking desperately for personnel, and they can't find them. We Somehow we have to automate, not because we want to reduce unit costs, but we have to do it uh, if we are not to be left behind. These are clear facts, and uh, we can derive very clear things from this. We can say we need an orderly process uh, in create terms of creating content. Whether we need a, a PIM system or do things in a standard system, there are thousands of different uh, viable scenarios. But w w what what do we do? This is the for me, this is we. The discussion is open. These are determining factors, and how you implement things. That's a very difficult aspect. And I think what you talked about when you talked about attitude and clarity. That uh, must be a far off. You can't uh, convince the pharaoh of this, and he won't build any pyramids. And if you if you Look at the data quality. I think we're talking about similar terms to the construction of a pyramid, but I'm just trying to provoke a bit. Br maybe a, a befitting question. We have actually answered your question. L small steps uh, are the uh, uh, s uh, solution to um, uh, taking decisions in uh, complex uh, settings. The pharaoh is not convinced. Um, uh, Chat GPT is coming. AI is coming. Organizations are only changing gradually in small steps. Don't you, don't you have to have a possibility to close this technology gap, to do a quantum leap, or um, is this problem solved automatically? Well, uh, 
in view of the organization. And uh, also by saying we're taking a bigger step now to, to close this, uh, this technology gap. Well, we don't have a flip chart, but there's a wonderful graph available for this. If you're interested in literature, um, uh, I can include this uh, with the documents for this conference. In summary, um, the graph shows, like Horst said, there are technological innovations, then there are leaps, and, um, uh, the curve can be more detailed. And uh, typically, organizations don't behave accordingly. They're f a lot slower in their development. Yeah, we saw this today. Do you want to explain? <coughs> I don't think everyone understands this. <coughs> Comment off the mic, unfortunately. Exactly, yes, good, exactly. At the end of the day, there are a few differences, but the last curve simply ends with a skull. These are the organizations that simply do not look at some issues. Organizations uh, that uh, simply do not decide at all or that uh, decide arbitrarily. And um, the decisions uh, that uh, were taken ages ago or that were not taken uh, result in no change. And we're returning to the Luhmann approach. The organization as such um, um, has the objective to continue to exist. And this is why these tensions result from any type of change, because organizations find change difficult to handle. And this is also why you have to think about how to communicate about change, how to introduce change, how to approach the boss and say, well, I have an idea, I need money and time. How, how do, you do, respond, do I respond to this? Vago uh, inspired me yesterday of a dinner with a, with a completely surprising question, and the question of, how do you act if your superior is AI? I thought uh, <coughs> uh, since then I, I've been reflecting on this. And uh, if the organization is such that, that in an ideal case, if uh, the organization improves linearly, and doesn't uh, not exponentially in terms of innovation cycles, then we will have a substantive uh, challenge. I think uh, sometimes uh, I when I get uh, in texts in LinkedIn, sometimes I get some stupid uh, emails from the automated marketing. Um, oh, please. OK. What we, what we do for our, our, our marketing. And then sometimes in, oh, in Outlook, there are pre-formulated replies. Uh, super, but so many, so much interest. And then you, you, you all know uh, these uh, things. Then I, I, I ask myself, when someone will come up with a, a f fob off AI, for me, that would be the logical step because if one a a AI is is in engaged in conversation, why not on the other side? Uh, that's something I can't understand. If you have, uh, if LinkedIn were to offer fob off AI, I'd be the first customer. So, of course, the fob off AI has to be intelligent enough to recognize that the one, uh, the one in the thousand answers is relevant for me. Uh, it exists, uh, really. Where can I buy it? Comment off the mic. Unfortunately, the interpreters cannot hear the speaker. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I just want to, uh, I want to say, f purely on a convenience perspective, uh, FOBOV 
magic AI is like uh, magic. Uh, there's data, and I can I need something that would would decide what sort of relevance for me and and fob fob the rest off, or perhaps say maybe that might be relevant for me in in th three years. But but host, if we had red wine here on the table, I would actually uh, top up your glass and say we're off track. Well, I'm, 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 no. no. I don't think so, because this idea, this uh, question was very well uh, formulated, and I think it's very relevant. Yeah. Uh, when your e-commerce manager back then said, why don't customers print out the websites uh, in, in the, the, the print it uh, button achieved that. I, I thought about what does it mean? So questions are good. And uh, if the human organization doesn't keep up and we hand everything else over to AI, we're, well, we're giving AI almost everything. Why not our organization? I'm not saying it's not a good thing, but the question is allowed. Uh, I've got one one question to ponder on for all. Uh, had AI discovered the U.S.? Let me answer the question in a different way. Do you know who discovered America? Not the Vikings or Columbus. Do you know what innovation was responsible for America being discovered? No, you don't know? You all know it. It was Gutenberg. No joke. It's, it's meant, uh, I, mean, I really mean this. Through the printing press, through the multiplying of the cards, first of all, they printed the discussions uh, and then put this onto a broader base. And America, the, the fact that America uh, is called America was because some um, 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 chart uh, creator wrote uh, America. I, I can't remember the name. So the multiply, it was basically multiplication of knowledge that took this forward. So why should uh, AI not have discovered America? If it's discovered other things, why not America? Yeah, yeah an, an answer to this. Yeah, welcome. Because nobody ever thought of it before. Nobody thought about it. But now, uh, to, to briefly take the uh, complexity detour, the state of the affairs is uh, that uh, this machine cannot do it yet. But we don't know what's going to happen in a few years from now. To just allow it as a possibility is complexity. Another example, the big, uh, the large Airbus, the 380 that uh, uh, has been produced near close to Hamburg. Um, the production tolerance, they had production tolerances, I, they had quality problems, and it didn't find the cause. It, then they, they searched for the cause, and then they had AI. They looked for statistical coherences, and they found out quite quickly that it was the high and low tide. One of the sensors had been influenced, and that was what re lo resulted in the imprecision. The problem was solved uh, pretty quickly. They found these statistical coordinates. No human would ever have, have, have found that. I think we don't want one more question over there. No? Okay. 
Unfortunately, yes, we're being kicked out. Yes, we're being. Thank you very much for your kitchen talk and for the interaction with the audience. Hans School will be on stage next, and we will also continue with lectures in the rooms downstairs. So, uh, thanks a lot to, to the two of you.